If you are a student of architecture or architecture fanatic, there's probably going to be a lot of architecture lingo and terms that you don't know. So on Terminology Tuesday on my channel, I try to explain in layman's terms the definitions of these complex things. And today we are going to be talking about vaulting. What is vaulting and how it works? <laughs> If you're new to my channel, my name is Natalie Perry. I am an architecture student at UPenn and an OSU alumni. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I make a bunch of architecture related content here. Also consider supporting my Patreon. Help me pay for all this research and editing work that goes behind the scenes that no one really sees. It does take me a while to edit out everything, but you know, I'm sure you don't want to hear about that. So let's just get right into vaulting. So by definition, a vault is a self-supporting, arched form, usually of stone or brick, serving to cover a space with a ceiling or roof. Essentially, arched structures generate projections in 3D space. When the arches are extruded, it is known as a vault. They generally run in a horizontal direction and are a common feature in architecture from ancient Egyptian architecture to today. Types of vaults. There's a lot. <laughs> Barrel vaults were present in ancient Egypt and in the Middle East. Arches are deep enough to cover a significant amount of space. Interestingly, vaults will redirect applied loads in the same way arches do. Vaults must be buttressed along its entire length, though, with heavy walls to support and redirect applied loads. Groin vaults were discovered by Roman architects and is essentially two barrel vaults intersected at right angles. They can span rectangular areas of great lengths because the loads are redirected and concentrated at its four corners. The supporting walls aren't as massive as barrel vaults and less buttressing is required. However, this vault type requires greater precision. Keep in mind, ancient Rome did not typically use mortar. The ribbed vault was developed by medieval European builders. A skeleton of arches, the ribs, form a framework of cross or diagonal arches on which the masonry is laid. Masonry during this time preferred pointed arches, therefore these ribbed vaults were able to be raised even higher and span very large distances. The arched diagonal ribs essentially just divide the vault's surfaces into various panels. The fan vault is even more complicated. It is composed of concave sections with the ribs spreading out like a fan. They are like half cones and the cones meet in the center of the vault. The fan vault is a part of the rib vault family. It is believed that architects working in the Gloucester Cathedral in England in the 1350s invented the fan vaults. Cloister vaults is a vault with four concave surfaces that all meet at a point above the center of the vault. The dome of Florence Cathedral is an example of an arch cloister vault built on an octagonal base. There are so many more vaults like the rampart vault, stilted vault, star vault, parabolic vault, but I'm not going to get into that. This is just a short introduction into vaulting and what kind of spaces it creates as a result. Once again, this was such an innovation and the architects and engineers before us really did a marvelous job. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and comment down below if there's anything I missed or something you would like to add to the conversation. If there's any terminology that you would like me to cover, please let me know. I'm so down for helping you guys out. Once again, hit the subscribe button, support my Patreon if you are able to, and I'll see you next time. Love you guys.